Hello and welcome to the STM32L4 MOOC online training. My name is André Barata and this is the dedicated session for the CAN peripheral. CAN stands for Controller Area Network and this protocol was introduced in the 80s. It was developed for automotive field applications. CAN was designed to be able to connect a network of electronic devices inside of a car. At the time there was no robust solution capable of providing fast communication on a noisy environment. The company who developed this protocol was Bosch. It was so successful that it is still being used, and based on this popularity it was even adopted to other fields, such as the industrial field, where it is a communication standard right now. During the CAN session we will focus on implementing a very basic CAN connectivity. This means that we will implement capabilities of receiving and transmitting CAN messages. The implementation of the CAN protocol in the L4 discovery board contains everything except the CAN transceiver. The transceiver converts the signal to the correct line voltage levels and the data from serial to differential. CAN can neither be clocked by the high-speed external or the embedded multi-speed internal. For our low-cost implementation, we can use the MSI and if we improve the query C is needed, it's possible to trim the clock source with the LSC just like in the USB implementation. As we don't have a real CAN transceiver in our board, we won't be able to implement a real CAN connectivity. For the purpose of this exercise, it is still possible to configure the CAN controller in a short circuit configuration. We have three test modes. Starting from the left side of the slides, the first is the silent mode where we short circuit the TX with our X line, yet it's still possible to receive messages from the external world. The second is the loopback mode where TX and our X lines are short circuit again, yet you can still transmit to the outside world but not receive. The third is the combination of both previous modes, but you can't either receive or transmit in this mode. On this session we will learn how to configure and generate code for the CAN peripheral in the STM32 CubeMX, and we will also learn how to properly handle the HAL CAN functions. The goal of this hands-on will be to create a program that is able to send and receive CAN messages. Let's now jump to the STM32 CubeMX to start generating our code. As a first step, we will click on New Project, then in the new window we will type our part number STM32L476VG We will double click on the desired part and then new project will start. When the new project starts we are going to the peripheral tree and we are going to the CAN1 peripheral and we are going to select master mode. As a consequence two pins will light up in green PA11 and PA12. Next step will be activate LSE from the RCC tab. LSE will be used to trim the clock source for a more accurate communication process. We will proceed to the clock configuration and we will switch from the default configuration which is 4 MHz on MSI to 48 MHz which is the requirement frequency to use with CAN communication. As a final step before generating our code we will go to the configuration tab and we will configure the CAN connectivity. The process of obtaining such input values is out of the scope of this training, but we will provide a link with detailed information on how to calculate them. So on Prescaler we will type 12, time quanta in bit segment 1 13 times, time quanta in segment 2 is 2 times. Then the operation mode will be loopback. On NVIC settings we will enable CAN RX0 interrupt. To finalize we will open RCC tab just to make sure the MSI auto calibration is enabled. With all steps concluded, we can save our project and generate our code, selecting System Workbench for STM32 as our IDE. 
After the code is generated by STM32 CubeMX and our project is imported in System Workbench for STM32, we will open our main.c file stored inside the source folder. We will go to the user code begin private variable section and we will create the can filter configuration structure called sfilterconfig. The purpose of this structure is to configure the filter features of CAN, which means the blocking or preventing the reception of unwanted CAN messages. The next step is to create two additional structures, one for the transmitted CAN message, called TX message, and other for the received CAN messages, called RX message. Then, on the user code begin to section, we will fill the S filter structure with the desired configuration. By default, the filtering on CAN implementation is disabled, so no message will be received until we enable it. By default, CAN peripheral is configured in a way that no message can be received. So, we will specify the filter number with 0. On filter mode, we will select mask mode as it prevents from receiving messages which are not masked as specified. The filter scaled will be defined as 32 bits. We set all numeric values to 0 as this means that we do not want to block any incoming message. No numeric parameters as the filter mode and filter scale do not have any impact on in such case. Then we set filter activation to enable as we want to apply this configuration. To finalize and to submit the new settings, we will call the HAL CAN config filter. The first parameter is the handler for the CAN one. The second parameter will be the pointer to the structure for the CAN filtering. At this point, CAN filter is fully configured and we can move to start defining the other structures we initialized before. Now we will create a relationship between the created structures and the CAN peripheral structure fields where the message to be sent and received are stored, and we can do so by typing the following. Then we proceed to specify the structure of the message to be transmitted. The TX message fields are The STDID or standard identifier is 0AX123 RTR field is the type of message that CAN will transmit. There are few types of CAN message and the most popular is the CAN message with data, which we will use in this hands-on. Next item, it will be the IDE. The IDE means identifier type. DLC defines the data length for the message. We will set to 8 bytes, which is the maximum supported by the CAN protocol. Then we will proceed to fill the data array from the index 0 to 7. In the end, we will call the HL can receive IT. The reason why we call this function here is just to enable the interrupt from the data reception of the CAN interface. In the infinite loop, we will periodically send the CAN message with HL transmit function, where the handler and the timeout period needs to be specified. Let's now go to the HTML for xx underscore IT dot C and on the can one rx key handler, which is responsible for the data reception, and as a first step, we will use the function hl unlock can one. Then we will call hl can receive it, and this function is responsible for the reception of the can message inside the handler. We can now build our application and enter debug mode. On the watch expressions tab, we will add rx message and tx message structures, just to be able to see what's inside of the structures. We will execute the program instruction by instruction, and if everything goes accordingly, we should see the message tx being configured and the message transmitted. 
on the message RX structure, we expect to receive the very same message. The program is working fine and achieving what we expected. Thank you for your attention.